Hello everyone, this is Yong from your Korea friend. Are you planning a trip to Seoul? Are you looking for a nearby place for a day trip from Seoul? Then watch this video. Today I will introduce a great place for a day trip from Seoul, which is Suwon. Many people requested a video about Suwon. Originally, I planned to visit Suwon myself and make a vlog video like this. But unfortunately, I couldn't go due to the heavy rain recently. So today, I will share some tips for a trip to Suwon. Let's get started. Suwon is a city located in south of Seoul. Suwon was called Mehol, Mulgol during the Three Kingdoms period. In the Joseon dynasty, it was named Suwon, Su meaning water, and Won meaning hills. Together, it means a gathering place of water, which is the same as the meaning of Mehol and Mulgol. Many people know Suwon as the location of Suwon Hwasong Fortress, and now it has become even more famous recently after the drama Our Beloved Summer because it was filmed in Suwon Hwasong. Moreover, it is not far from Seoul, so it is a popular destination for a day trip. History Suwon, which was once a quiet village until the mid-Joseon period, underwent a significant change due to the tragic event known as Imo Habyeon, the tragic death of Prince Sado. It was the incident where King Yongjo, the 21st king of the Joseon dynasty, locked his son, Prince Sado, inside the rice chest, which led to his death. Jongjo, the grandson of King Yongjo and the son of Prince Sado, who witnessed the event, became the 22nd king. He built Suwon Hwasong Fortress to house the tomb of his father, Prince Sado. King Jongjo began to envision strengthening his loyal authority and reforming Joseon by moving capital to Suwon. And from that time on, Suwon started to develop in earnest. With King Jongjo's overwhelming support, Suwon grew into a city that could rival Hanyang, which is Seoul now. However, Suwon lost its prominence after the King Jongjo's death. Now, the current population of Suwon is over 1 million, which is the highest among basic self-governing bodies in Korea. Also, because it is close to Seoul, many people commute to Seoul. In Suwon, the headquarter of Korea's representative company, Samsung, called Samsung Digital City is located. So the commercial district is very large and Suwon itself forms an independent economic zone. The landmarks of Suwon's are Suwon Hwasong Fortress and Hwasong Hengung. What to expect? Suwon was recently started to be known as a domestic travel city. Of course, it has become famous enough to be chosen as one of the best travel destinations in Korea for foreigners. The reason is that Suwon is developed for historical tourism and Hwasong Fortress walls offer a unique view that cannot be seen in any other city. Tourist attractions are concentrated around Suwon, Hwasong Fortress, making it easier to travel around. When to visit? Suwon is a good travel destination in all four seasons. You can go at any time because there are different vibes for each season. However, attractions are outdoor, so it is best to avoid visiting Suwon when it is too hot or cold. To Suwon. Suwon is not that far from Seoul once again, but there's no direct way to get there. So it takes about an hour to an hour and a half from Seoul to Suwon, requiring you to transfer transportations two or three times. You can use subways or KTX to go to Suwon station, or use Gyeonggi-do bus that operates in certain areas in Seoul. The best way is to search any attractions in Suwon that you want to go from your current location on neighbor map. It will tell you the fastest way. Map. Suwon is divided into four areas, but for tour purposes, you can only look into Partalgu, where tourist attractions are concentrated. Suwon station is located here, and the bus terminal is located here. So please note that you cannot go from Seoul to Suwon, Hwasong without transferring transportations. How to plan. As mentioned before, tourist attractions are gathered in Paltalgu, so you can travel early in the morning and stay there until the evening. 
a day trip is enough. However, if you like to take time to look around leisurely, or if you are visiting from a far city, then one night, two days is good. Transportation. There are few subways in Suwon, but there are many buses, so you can move anywhere in Suwon comfortably. Since the attractions are concentrated, you should be able to travel around without using transportations once you get to the first place. Now let's look into attractions in Suwon. Because attractions are concentrated around Hwasong Fortress, you can see almost all of them by walking around the fortress. It takes about 2 hours to walk the whole fortress, so it would be nice to walk along the wall. Suwon Hwasong Fortress As mentioned earlier in the history part, Suwon Hwasong Fortress was built during the wake of King Jongjo in the Joseon Dynasty. During the Japanese colonial period and the Korean War, it was severely damaged by bullets and shelling, but most of it has been restored after residents' restoration campaign. This Suwon Hwasong Fortress is landmark of Suwon and is listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Sademun. Sademun means four gates. There are a total of four gates to enter and exit Suwon Hwasong Fortress. Chang'anmun, the northern gate, is the main gate. Chang'an means capital, and by its name, we can tell how King Jongjo wanted Suwon to be another capital of Joseon. This gate is bigger than Sungnaemun and was the largest gate in the Joseon dynasty. Changyongmun is the east gate. Changyong means the blue dragon, symbolizing the sacred dragon protecting the east. The south gate, Paltalmun, contains the meaning that the road is open in all directions. The western gate, Hwasongmun, means the west of Hwasong. Paltalmun and Hwasongmun retain their original appearance, so they are listed under national treasure. In front of these four gates, there are half moon shaped Ongsong protecting each gate. Hwasong Hengung. Inside the fortress, there is Hwasong Hengung. Hengung refers to a temporary palace where the king temporarily stayed. In Joseon Dynasty, there were Hengung for evacuation, for rest, and for memorial purposes. This Hwasong Hengung was a temporary palace for the memorial of Prince Hado. It was also a place for King Jongjo's dream of getting new, stronger politics. Therefore, it's huge. Shinpunglu, the main gate of Hwasong Hengung, means another new hometown. You can see how much King Jongjo valued this place. In addition, there are Bosundang and Changnakdang in the center of this Hengung, built for his mother. This shows how deeply he loved and respected his mother as well. Bangasurjong Pavilion. This place was a facility to monitor the northeast area. It was made so that the cannons could be fired from here. There is a pond called Yongyeon in front. So even though it was a military facility, it was used as a pavilion to enjoy the scenery as well. Dongjangde, Yeonmudae. This looks like an ordinary pavilion, but it was originally built to train soldiers. Currently, this place is known as a night view and sunset point because the sunset and the night view are beautiful here. Flying Suwon. It is a place where you can see the night view of Suwon from a higher place. Here you can see Suwon Hwasong Fortress at a glance by riding a helium balloon up to 150 meter above the ground. Suwon Traditional Culture Center. This is a good place to see Korean traditional scenery. The Hanok, Changtokde, and garden are beautifully maintained here. Also, this is a place to experience traditional culture, but it seems like it's only in Korean, so it will be difficult to participate in the program. But it is still recommended to visit because many people visit here to see Hanok and the garden. Hengnidangil. This is a street of cafes, desserts, and restaurants in low-rise buildings. You can enjoy a variety of delicious food and drinks as you pass by. Hengungdong Mural Village. Mural Village is a place where various murals are painted in the alleys. It is said that it was created due to an art project to restore and reinvigorate the area to bring out the modern and contemporary life and human values preserved in Hwasong. Everywhere in the alley is a photo spot here. Paltalsan. Paltalsan, a mountain with a height of 128 meter, is located right next to the fortress 
there is a promenade along the fortress wall, and when you climb to the top, there is Hojang Day where you can see downtown Suwon and Hwasong Hengung at a glance. If you want to see Hwasong from a high place, it would be nice to walk up here. Hyowon Park. Inside Hyowon Park, located a little away from Suwon Hwasong Fortress, there is a Warhawan, a traditional Chinese garden. Warawan was built by about 80 Chinese workers after Gyeonggi province in Korea and Guangdong province in China promised each other to build traditional gardens in each other's city in 2003. Warawan is a unique spot to see a garden with old traditional characteristics of Guangdong in the heart of Suwon. Aqua Planet this is an aquarium located in Suwon. It is smaller than the aquariums in Coax and Lotte World, but there are 30,000 creatures of 210 species. It seems like a good place to visit with children. Now let's look at what food to try in Suwon. Suwon Galbi Suwon Galbi is so famous that if you ask Koreans what food immediately comes to mind when they think of Suwon, they will answer Suwon Galbi. This is because Suwon beef ribs are more hearty, larger, and softer than ribs in other regions, so they are delicious. If you go to Suwon, be sure to try Suwon Galbi. Suwon Ho Chicken The second famous food is Suwon Ho Chicken. Suwon Galbi is a bit of high-class food, so people don't eat it often, but Suwon Ho Chicken is a food that the common people mostly look for. Unlike the Korean chicken you usually see, Suwon Ho chicken is an old-fashioned style. Chicken is fried in a cauldron as a whole. It's very traditional. You should try it. Today, I went over Suwon. If you visit Suwon, you will be able to know more about Korean history. Also, Suwon is close to Seoul and has a lot of tourist attractions gathered together, so I think it's really good for a day trip. It would have been nicer if I went to Suwon to show and give you a review, but I couldn't do that because of the recent rain. However, I am planning to go on a day trip to Suwon very soon. I think it will be good if I can share the route I will be taking after the trip. So please wait a little until the weather gets better. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I will come back with another video next time. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe for more Korea travel tips. Thank you.